Right, we'll welcome back. We're looking at uh, the next procedure in calculus, which you will need to be very familiar with, and that is integration. There we go. Nicely set up. Now, where we had differentiation, where we were finding the rate of change of one variable with another, integration is really the reverse process. We're going the other way, and, and some people call it anti-differentiation. That's another term. Differentiation. We're going the other way. In other words, we're going to undo differentiation. In the opposite, we're going back the other way. Now, let's have a look at some interesting um, terms. All right? We'll give you a function. If I give you 3x squared, this one can be 3x squared plus 10. And then I say let y equal 3x squared minus 4 and ask you to differentiate these, first of all, you'll say, oh, that's easy. Because in all cases, the differentiated form, dy dx, is in fact 6x. 2 threes are 6, 2 threes are 6, 2 threes are 6. That cancels out. So this, in fact, is the right form. This is the correct one. They all give a derivative of 6x. So when we're going back, if we have 6x and you're asked to differentiate this, then you have to try and get back to the original form. Now, we don't know what the constants are, what these actual terms are. So we need the letter C, which stands for a constant. And this will be brought in in a few minutes. OK, if I show you in the book, here we go. To avoid confusion when doing integration, we introduce C, a constant, where indefinite, indefinite integrals are involved. In other words, there are no limits at the moment. We'll do that a bit later on. The integral sign, which is this uh, sort of a curvy S, is used to denote the process. So if we have something like this to integrate x squared, what we do is we raise the power by 1 and divide by the new power, and then add a constant. And if we're given values later on, we can find the constant. So the definition, the working definition that you need to familiarize yourself with for integrating is this one. Raise the power by 1, divide by the new power, and add a constant when needed. Okay, now let me show you one that I've already worked out before we go back into the book. Knowing this one, let's have a look here. If the examiner says, okay, the differentiated form is giving you this, dy dx, equals, for example, 3x squared minus 2x plus 4. Can you integrate this Okay, to find what the form is? You say, yes, I can. Okay, Then y will equal the integral of this. There's your sign of 3x squared minus 2x plus 4 with respect to x. And here we go. Raise the power by 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. Divide by the power. So this will give us x cubed. Raise the power by 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Divide by the power. This will give us x squared. Now, raise the power by 1. Here, this is x to the naught. So raise it by 1 becomes x to the 1. So the constant now, this one that's given, becomes 4x. But we're not sure now if there are any other constants, because this could, in fact, refer to a whole series of terms. So what we now do is add our little c. This is our friend. We bring in the constant. Now, an examiner might then say, or the lecturer could say, can you find y when x equals 2? OK. Or you need to find what c is. So he'd probably say, let y equal 10, x equal 2, and then we'll c equal a particular value. Now you have a value for y, you have a, a value for um, x, we can find c. So let's just reiterate that one. Find here when y equals 10, x equals 2, what will c equal? Okay. So the solution now becomes as follows. I'll do it on a different bit of paper. This will be a bit clearer for you. We want to find C. We've given some values. The examiner's given us values. So let's just reiterate. He said, let Y equal 10. X equals 2. What will C equal in this particular case? So we'll write it out. 
we've got x cubed minus x squared plus 4x plus c. So now we substitute in, sub in your values, 10 equals 2 cubed minus 2 squared plus 4 by 2 plus c. We can work this out very carefully. 8 minus 4 plus 8 plus c. 16 minus 4 is 12, so we finally get 10 equals 12 plus c. Bringing this across, changing this over, we will find that c must equal, hopefully, negative 2. So if that's the case, your final answer now is therefore y equals x cubed minus x squared plus 4x minus 2. You see, this is the unique equation that fits this data that the actual examiner has given us. Okay, so that's one that is very common. We have to deal with that um, a good deal. Now, sometimes we have limits here. All right, so we'll have a look at limits a little bit later on. And I'll just go back into the book now to show you the worked example. Here we are. Example, find the integral of 1 over x squared. Right, well, we have to be careful. We have to rearrange this, remembering that 1 over x squared is the same as x to the minus 2. So what they're really asking is the integral of x to the negative 2. Okay, so this will equal, we'll raise the power by 1. Minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. You must be good with your negative numbers. Divide by the power. So when you integrate this, it becomes minus 1 over x plus the c. The c there is the constant because there are no limits that are given. The one at the bottom of the page can be done in a similar manner. This is fairly straightforward. Raise the power by 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. Divide by the new power. x to the 1. Raise the power by 1 becomes 2. Divide by the power. And don't forget the c. All right, The c is the constant that you'll need to include in there. Okay, the next one is, again, this one a little bit tricky, but we can do it. This is a square root. Find the integral of 2 root x plus 3. So rearranging the root, the square root of x is x to the half. Okay, this is what we do. We raise the power by 1 and divide by the power. Now, the point here is that when you divide by a fraction, let me just show you this. And these are tricky with the powers, okay? So we've got um, x to the half. Now, I need to raise that by 1. So this becomes x to the 1 and a half, which is 3 over 2. But if I divide by the power, this then becomes x to the 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2. I have to divide by the power. So when you divide by the fraction, this in fact turns upside down. Okay? So... As it turns upside down, have we got this right? Let me see, one and a half, yes. Divide by that. So this will become the same as x over 3 over 2 multiplied by 2 over 3. We might have a little typing error there. I'll just check on that one. So this will give us 2 to the x, 3 divided by the 3. Okay, now I think in your book there might be a typing error there. This is divided by 3 over 2. Turn it upside down, this should be 2 over 3. Uh, I think that should be a 3 there. Okay, you can just check that yourself later on. This one here, if we have x plus 1 squared, we have to expand this out and then we can rewrite it. So sometimes before you do integrate the term, you have to simplify it. So x squared over x is x, 2x over x is 2. And this is 1 over x. So this term here can be simplified to this. All right. Then you integrate that. Now this is a special form because 1 over x, when you integrate 1 over x, um, it integrates into a, a known form. And this is one you'll have to learn, which is log x, natural log x. Again, with the cosine, integrate 7 cos x. You go back to your um, trig form. And cos x will actually integrate into sine x. 7 is a constant. 
and because you're going back into a family of curves you will need the letter C for constant here as we've got all the way through here. Now at the bottom of the page that I'm on it says here's a way of finding the constant C. So if a curve has a gradient of x cubed plus 1 over x squared it passes through this point 1 1 find the equation of the curve Okay, so let's see how this works out. We're trying to find the equation of the curve. Now, dy dx, when we, differ when we actually um, differentiate this, we have, let's have a look, x cubed plus 1 over x squared. So I'll show you how this simplifies first of all. We're given dy dx, which is x cubed plus 1 over x squared. Now we rearrange this we can divide this out. This is the same as that, into that goes x, and that into that simply is that. Or, as we've got in the book, x to the minus 2. So that's what we're given. Okay. Now, if we integrate that, raise the power by 1, divide by the power, this is what we get. Raising this power by 1, we get minus 1. So integrating, we get this term, and then at this point, we put... 1 in place of y and 1 in place of x. Work it through very simply and you find that c equals 1 and a half. So the equation of this particular curve then is written out as y equals x squared over 2, which is this one, minus 1 over x, and this is the value c. 1.5 is the same as 3 over 2, and you can leave it 